Welcome to Florida Focus, a college football podcast. My name is Brandon. I'm a lifetime Seminole fan. I'm Chris. I'm a lifetime Gator fan. And I think both you and I agree, Chris, this is not the way we want to be coming to our audience today. Um, Bobby Bowden, the legendary coach at Florida State, age 91, passes away as the second winningest Division I head coach in football history. And a very solemn day, not just for Seminole Nation, but for the whole entire sport. Yeah, and I mean, if you're a Gator fan or any college football fan, you know the name Bobby Bowden. And and you, no matter what, uh, uh, who, who, who he's coaching against or what he was doing, you always had nothing but respect for him. Mm-hmm. And not only as just a coach because dude won some games, but also as a person, I don't think any Gator fan um, said I hate Bobby Bowden the person. They might have said I, I hate him because he's coaching the wrong team, but mm-hmm. you know, no one ever said I hate him the person. And it's definitely a sad day for college football. Yeah, I mean this this morning was just devastating. Despite the fact that that we had some kind of warning, um, we knew that Bowden had a terminal diagnosis just a couple of weeks ago knew that family members were coming in to visit him and it's it's a really trying time just with everything with the pandemic you know he was a guy that came through had covid came back from that had a cancer scare several years ago came back from that um but also knew that his health wouldn't sustain permanently and that this of course just like everyone else is an inevitability um so here we are and it's it's just been quite a shock. I, I I'm curious to see where exactly just a couple of things. Where exactly the national media lands on this and what what they deal with the family. By that I mean do they give them time to grieve? Do they give Anne time to spend time with her children? Do they give time for the family not to be in the spotlight? It seems to have been fine so far and there's been privacy up to this point. We didn't even really know what the illness was until one of the sons told, I think it was Terry. So they have respect to the privacy of the family, which means a lot to me, uh, but it means even more to the Bowden family too. Yeah. I haven't heard anything um, negative or controversial. It's just been a lot of respect um, poured out to, to him and, and his family. Um, and I just, just hoping that uh, they can get through this week as, as best as they can until the funeral and, they start the grieving process and all that stuff. But I think it's been, uh, like you said, we kind of got a, a heads up not too long ago that he was sick. And so it was definitely a blow. Not, I would say shocking, but definitely a, a blow. And, um, you, you feel for that family. Yeah, you really do. Um, cause you got to, especially you and, and all the FSU fans got to know him and his, his wife well, and his sons who, um, also coached, and you just you, you you feel for them for sure this week because um, as much as you're hurting, they're going to hurt even even worse. Yeah, yeah, very true. So I had a couple of thoughts, and and Chris has been kind enough to give me the the floor for a few minutes here, and mm-hmm. and then we can also kind of dive into it further. This is this is the time for Noel Nation, all college football fans, to take some time to reevaluate to reevaluate some things. I know that on this show we don't get very spiritual, but Bobby was always the kind of person, not coach, person, that said it's faith, family, and football, and it's always in that order. So the challenge here in the way we honor his memory, whether or not some of our listeners want to hear this, is we have to evaluate all three of those things. What order are they in? Where's your faith? Um, how much time do you spend with your family? Are there relationships on either side of those that need to be reevaluated? And are you spending your Saturdays with football? Okay, then that's that should be number three, and we, we all do that. <laughs> that's why we're even here with the show. Um, but we need to really put those into perspective, and I think that's the way we serve Bobby's honor, to be completely honest. Um, with the Bowden family, all of his kids, grandkids, great-grandkids, um, they made it very open to the public that they want, in lieu of flowers, donations made to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. So that's another way we can serve his honor. There have been just an outpouring of the media 
nationally, locally, and just the stories just keep coming in and in and in. So I thought I would take a moment, Chris, to share you some of my favorite stories and my memory of what Bobby meant to me. Um, I, I I come up with some of the funny stories. That's what's been hitting me today after the tears went dry. Um, when he was catching some grief from the media toward the end of his career, he said, wow, the PlayStation All-Americans really came out today. You know, he, he still had a little bit of a sense of humor, right? Yeah. Um, and then tying back to the, the Gators, it was, I think it was the 96 game when we were playing you guys at home. Warfel's just getting hit, questionably late calls, and he's like, oh, they're playing through the echo of the whistle. <laughs> so that just kind of shows to me, like, both spectrums of where Bobby could land. But mm. like you said, his players and even other opponents, never a bad word to say. And you're right. I mean, the, the blood between the Knolls and the Gators certainly would have been there, but it was always mutual respect on both sides. And that's what I always respected about it. And the teams were both very good, and they both – had a pretty balanced decade um, out of that rivalry. So a few notes that I kind of noticed, and I'll, I know you can find this online, but I wanted to share the funeral services schedule for a couple of reasons. This coming Friday, August 13th, Coach Belden will lie in honor in the Capitol Rotunda in Tallahassee. This simply isn't done for just normal citizens. I was trying to rack my brain remember the last time that the state did this for someone, and it was either Lawton Childs, who was a governor or mayor, and T.K. Weatherall, who used to be president of Florida State. And these were all two examples in the last maybe 15 years. This this is a huge honor um, to be laid out like this. And then he will actually be laying repose at the Moore Athletic Center at Doak Campbell Stadium from 2 to 7 the same day. That second option is where it's open to the public. The first one of these lies in the state of the Capitol is kind of VIP only from what I understand. So if you're going to want a chance to see him and pay your final respects, Friday's the time to do it. Or you can take your chances Saturday at 11 a.m. They're going to have the funeral service at the Civic Center. The doors open at 930. And Chris, I I think if you're not there by 7, you're probably not going to get a seat. Maybe the night before. Yeah. Um so I'm assuming it's just going to be a sea of garnet and gold everywhere you go. Um, bear with me. Um, the, the idea behind what Bobby did, Tallahassee, it's undescribable. There's not enough adjectives. Um, you go to a city like Tallahassee, and people that live there know exactly what I'm talking about. It's isolated from everything. You're, you're not within three hours, two and a half hours of any major city. Um, Gainesville's roughly the same size, about two hours away, and that, that's it. You're in the middle of the country. Bowden goes there from a school that 25 years before his arrival was all female, had like three wins in four seasons, and just completely turned around everything. Without him, Florida State football, if the sport even survived, would have been like a D2 or like a G5 program at best. Mm. And here we are hanging three national title banners, three Heisman Trophy winners. It's all because of him. There's just simply no way it would have ever come to fruition without his skill, without his persistence, without his just all of the all of the ways he was able to get in recruits, and establish relationships. And um, if you haven't seen the Bowden Dynasty movie that was made a couple of years ago, it was made at a perfect time because it encapsulates everything from his being uh, asked to move to Alabama to go back and coach for the Crimson Tide. Um, all of the constant rumors of him joining the NFL that he just always said no to. Um, it, it's really humbling to know that a guy like this, and, and we're looking back at his life, he would have hated to have been known for football. And that's just crazy to me. Um, it really is. So, just a few words and I'll... This is for really the Knoll Nation and for the Bowden family. Um and Coach Bowden, the cares of this world concern you no longer. Uh, you have completed this life. Your work is done. The children of your heart have grown. Your family is on its journey, and they're happy and they're healthy in their pursuits. You have loved much and well, Coach. To those you leave behind, I hope that we will remain in each other's hearts as well as yours. Thank you for taking such good care of Seminole Nation. And to all of you who have been our friends, thank you for teaching 
me, about life and about love. May we go forward today with a small flickering of light in our soul. May the memories of Coach Bowden bring comfort rather than pain, and may the words, touch, and presence of others bring solace. May we be blessed in our coming in and going out, grateful for a life lived and a legacy left behind. May we go in peace and in blessing. Go Knowles. Wow. Um, yeah, it's uh, well said. Very touching. And I know he meant a lot to you. And I know maybe some might be listening and don't really get it. Why Why does this guy have such an effect on you? Um, I mean, he has an effect on me, too. And, and I'm a, I'm a Gator fan. But, but I mean, I get it. I, I totally get it why a coach who um, – some people may or may not have met Seminole Nation may may never have talked to him, but I know for many many Noel fans he was a huge part of their lives as for many years, and uh, you could see him on Saturdays, um, yeah. and for four hours a week in the fall, um, he was right there with you, um, and even there in the press conference in the middle of the week, right? So mm-hmm. I, I I get it, I totally get it, and. Um, I mean, there's some coaches that come to mind that it, when they pass off, I'm going to be feeling the same way. Um, so I get it. I totally get it. And and it, it's it's weird because maybe yeah, he definitely wasn't like a relative, but he definitely was a huge part of your lives and many other lives. And mm-hmm. um, and it, it's it's a sad thing, but I mean, college football and just really the world needs more Bobby Bowden's. Um, so if you're a person out there, you strive to be like him. Um, forget the football side. Strive to be like him as a person. And if you do that, you will be better, and those around you will be better. That was a great words, Chris. I appreciate that. And it, it, I think the reason why it, 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 it hits like a family member passing away is because he was so accessible and easy to find. I mean, he was listed literally in the Tallahassee phone book his entire mm. life wow. and his, his, which meant his address was posted and you could mail something to his office. He signed it, and mail it back to you. Um, I wouldn't say he never met a stranger, but he, he was always just like, Oh, Hey, you want to talk to me? What for? And you're like, really? <laughs> you don't know why. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. and you hear story after story, after report, after national outlets saying all the same things, uh, about just how everybody just kind of drops in and how he was always just always there. He was always when I met him at Fan Day um, several years ago. He was really good. They, because he had the longest line, they had to kind of keep a steady pace uh, mm-hmm. with people coming in, getting signatures and things like that. They they kind of had to start setting a rule like one item per fan. <laughs> um, all right, all right. And they're like, we're gonna try to do best to have him look up at pictures because he wanted to see as many people as he could. Yeah. And um, it's just it's just amazing. I, another thing that I, I started to see and, and this it really starts to hit home. Like, Oh, this is just a guy from Alabama. He's actually going to be laid to rest in his home in Trustville, Alabama. He'll actually be, um, laid in state at Samford university, which is where he played football, um, before oh. that. So he's, he's still going to give, even after he's been passed away, he's still going to give fans time to spend time with him, which is just remarkable. That's cool. one of, one of my favorite things that we got from Bowden was Dad Gummit. <laughs> I yeah. just always thought that was a a cool way to be clean yet be frustrated. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm angry, but I'm not going to curse. So I always thought that was kind of cool. He was a, as a a child, I was like, oh, I can say this. I can <laughs> well, when I'm when I'm angry, I can say this. I'm not going to get in trouble. So thank you, Bobby Bowden, for for Dad Gummit and. um I will say that it, it was – this is how much I respect this man is that – I mean, I grew up huge Florida fan. In the 90s, Spurrier Bowden, that big rivalry. I do not like Florida State. You know this, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> but <laughs> when he had uh, – I forgot what year it was. Was it 07 was his last year, I think? Uh, 09. Um, 09, okay. Um. His last game was the Gator Bowl. I, I, I know I've mentioned this on, on the podcast before. The last game was the Gator Bowl. It was January 1st, I believe. 
Um, in, in, in Jacksonville, like I think kickoff was at noon versus West Virginia. And the night before new year's Eve, I was at, at our, our church with the youth group at an all nighter, like a lock in. We stayed up all night. Right. And like three, it must've been like three, 4 AM. One of my friends who's a Noel fan texted me and she was like, Hey, I have tickets to the Gator, the Gator bowl. Um, do you want to go? And normally I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to go to sleep after staying up all night. <laughs> but she knew that I liked college football and she knew that it was, we both knew it was his last game. Yeah. And she's like, I know that you had mentioned in the past, you'd like to go to his last game. So I remember I stayed up all night. I went straight from that lock in, drove up to Jacksonville and watched his game, his last game. I was so tired it was rainy i was a zombie (laughs) but i did that because i respected him and i was like this is history you know one of the the best coaches ever even though he was my rivals coach he was one of the best coaches ever and i was like i'm gonna do it because um i I want to be there for his last game that's how much he meant to me and i i even like his team yeah (laughs) so uh he he was a great dude he really was that's that's always put you very high on my list of respect, Chris, and I think I've told you that. It's because I was going to mention that if you didn't because that is exactly the kind of guy he was. Um, and I've never forgotten that you did that. You went out of your way to go, and it was his last game. And against West Virginia, I mean, the story writes itself sometimes, the, the mm-hmm. program he left Florida State for. And, um, yeah, it was. you're right, it was a rainy January 1st day. <laughs> But, um, I mean, I, I want to say that game sold out within 25 minutes of tickets going because everybody uh, wanted to be there. And there was no way I was going to miss it for sure. So that even a Gator fan like yourself making that extra trip, especially with no sleep, um, it means a lot. So I appreciate yeah, well, that. I'm sure all the Seminoles do. But it just shows <laughs> it shows the kind of coach he was. Yeah, well, the, the I'll tell you what. I was the only Gator fan in a sea of garnet and gold. <laughs> Those fans at the time did not appreciate me. Well, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> it was alright. I wasn't here for them, so we we apologize fine. collectively <laughs> today here. for that because we we all appreciate it now. We do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he was a good dude. Um, definitely a good dude, and uh, I, I know that um, it's gonna be different. Um, I'm, I'm I'm interested to see how uh, uh, teams are gonna like pay respects throughout the season yeah. now I, you saw on social media like hurricanes and gator football like their official instagram accounts put some nice touching things to them and yeah. um so i'm just curious i know i mean um who's uh florida state's first game or what's their first home game so our first home game is labor day weekend that sunday against notre dame mm, wow. um and let me tell you chris I got my tickets when they went on sale earlier on, and I am thankful for that because I'm sure I won't get them now. Yeah. Um, I'm certain that game is going to be jam-packed as much as they're going to allow it. And yeah. um, I, I haven't heard. Early. Yeah. yeah early. I haven't heard what they're going to do, but I, I have no doubt that we're all going to be moved deeply. Yeah. I'm certain yeah, of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a tough one, man. It's a tough loss. Yep. So the – um. Yeah, Notre Dame game is, is coming up, and I'm curious long-term what the plan is here. And, I mean, this is – we're not even 24 hours right now as of this recording out from his passing. But, you know, we've already named a field after him, and mm. I'm sure there's more to come. I mean, do, my who knows or who at this point really cares what happens because they're going to honor him, I'm sure, befittingly. I mean, we already have a statue and a stained glass. Right. But just... Do we do like a stadium drive become Bobby Bowden Drive, something like that? Um, oh. I would imagine they consider that. That's That's my vote. Um, yeah, I was thinking that's a good idea. I'm like, because what else have <laughs> haven't they done? Right. Um, he is such a huge part of that that uh, city and and obviously that college. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe a street, I guess, is the next next thing. Yeah, I mean, can't like I said, none of adjectives, but right. it's been a it's been a whirlwind of a day. Uh, I'm sure collectively, Noel fans have been in tears and. They're going to keep rolling this week. But, um, you know, we have everything we have because of him. I mean, there's there's simply no other way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Man. Well, 
thank you, Chris, for joining me in this. And thank you for all your respect and your kind words. It means a lot. Um, and this season will be an interesting one, but um, it's it's been a different program since he's left for sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I hope and pray the legacy that he left there continues on um, for at least my lifetime. I don't want to see a change. Um, mm. So, but I think we're in good hands. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, thank you fans for listening. It's kind of an instant reaction or kind of a unscheduled appearance here. We're going to have some more content coming up for you pretty soon, but um, thank you as always for everything. Chris, remind people how they can get in touch with us and share your favorite Bowden memory. Yeah. Uh, Florida focus podcast.com. Many ways to reach us um, through there and hear us through there. So Florida focus podcast.com. Yep. All right. Well, thanks again, Chris, for everything. This is Brandon saying go Knowles. This is Chris go Gators. And probably the only time I'll say this also go Knowles. Go Knowles.